basically a couple of years ago, I decided I want to learn a little bit more about electronics and if and how I can use whatever I can learn to help myself in my normal job. During the last two years, I have tried quite some platforms like Arduino, Parallax Propeller, things like that. And at the end, I ended up with the PSOX from Cyprus. Pretty nice and, and little beasts based on ARM processors. And the funny thing with those is that they have within the silicon embedded already some analog devices. I would like to show you different options, how to get started with those PSOX and what you can do with those. What I have here is the micrometeor for PSOC 5 LP from eMicro. It is actually a very nice, pretty complete development kit where you can try everything that you can do with a PSOC 5 LP. The good thing on this board is that you really have everything together. You have the display with a touch screen, which is a resistive touch screen. You have some audio part on it. You have some extra memory on it. You have an acceler accelerometer on it, things like that. At the same time, this also means a that this board is definitely not one of the cheapest ones. It is. It has a list price on eMicro of one hundred twenty nine dollars. And uh, the second part is with all these things fixed and installed, you are losing one of the nice parts of the PSOX that you basically can design on almost each and every pin, almost each and every function that you want to have. So even though it is a bit expensive, I like it and as you can see here, I use it to hack together simple test designs, to hack together a small graphical user interface for those test designs. Everything can be done with, with sample code, with sample logics, so it is pretty quickly done. Actually, this board here this hack here that I have here was done in a couple of hours and the program to, to use it and to have a test device for, for my machine monitoring system basically took me two days, three days, somewhat in that range. Considering that I do that in the evening hours after my normal job, I think this is, this is quite a good result with as less as possible effort to get something together. During the last weeks, I was thinking how I can A, reduce the cost for those boards a little bit, because $130 is nothing that you, that you want to spend for, for each and every gadget as a base platform that you're going to use. And B, I wanted to get a bit more flexible in the pin layout of the PSOC 5LP. And I came across this little beast here, which is a demo kit, or they call it prototyping kit from Cypress, with a PSOC 5LP on it, and almost 40 pins have being routed out here to these header connectors. And they are freely available. You can do whatever you want to do with them. Here in the front, we have a programming device so that the whole board can be used as is. You just have you just plug a USB on it and then you're done. This is very much what it looks like when we have it out of the package. Most of the components are on top of the board. There is only a few passives technically, which, which are down here. 
As you can see, the programmer part can be snapped off. So later on, when you don't need that anymore, when, you're, when your application is finished, you just have this 40 pin, I believe it is 40 pin. Uh, you have this, this 40 pin board, which you can put straight in your application and can have it running. So what we have here basically is a complete development platform for the piece of 5LP with the target processor and with a programming device, which by the way, also contains a piece of 5LP uh, who is handling all the debug, uh, the programming and debug port. With a little trick, if we snap off this programmer, and do a little modification to it. We have a fully fledged programmer, single wire, working for pretty much each and every PSOC device that we can that we can imagine. Well, for all PSOC devices four and five, actually. Okay, let us have a closer look on the programmer and what we have to do to make it usable for different targets. Let us first have a look on the connection between that little programmer thing, which they call kitproc, and the actual board. If we look at it, we have five pins, clearly visible, which do the actual programming and debugging connections. These five pins we find in the schematics that Cyprus is providing. And those are actually the programming voltage, or better to say the target voltage, as they name it here. This is telling the programmer on which voltage the target processor is running and adjusting the programming pins to the very same voltage. Then we have the reset which gets sent from the programmer to the target to bring it in programming mode. We have the single wire clock and we have the single wire data IO, which are used to get the data forward and backwards. One of the things that we have to keep in mind is this prototyping kit gets supplied by the USB port with five volts. And technically with that, the whole prototyping kit all the time is running with five volts. If we want to use it with 3.3 volts, we have to find a way, A, to segregate the kit proc from the main board and to make sure that the kit proc can work with a target that is only supplied by 3.3 volt. If we try to run the kit proc with, with a five volt programming voltage on a target that is only running with three volt or 3.3 volt, technically we are destroying the target. This is what we don't want. So first thing we look for is we have a connection from the supply voltage coming from the USB port to our V target or target voltage. And these diode D1, we have to remove if we want to make that, that target board running on 3.3 volts. As soon as we have removed these diode D1, the target voltage will be taken from our target board only and it technically will here be verified and the kit proc is then using the target voltage as a reference and will do will adjust the programming voltage to the to the target how can we run the target board with 3.3 volt? Well, that is not too difficult at the end. We have to do a little modification on basically both things together. A, we have to snap off the kit proc 
from the target board. The reason is we have a couple of more connections running over here for a serial connection, which actually have to be cutted in any way. So the easiest way is to snap off the kit proc from the target board. And then we have to remove a diode which is connecting the 5 volt supply from the USB port to the target voltage going here. This diode we find on the back side and I think easiest we can read it this way. Let me try to get that all a little bit bigger. So here we have diode 1 and this diode actually is the connection between the 5 volt supply that is powering all the that is powering all the kit proc to the target voltage. After we have after we have snapped off the kit proc from the target board and after we have removed D1 from kit proc, we only have to find a way how we can connect back again the whole thing. So what I've done here is I have snapped off the kit proc from the main board. I have used a small switching power supply to swap from 5 volt that I'm simply getting here from the from the kit proc down to 3.3 volt which I need because my display adapter that I want to use later on only survives if I use 3.3 volt. Then I have connected via some wiring the programming port to the standard socket that I have welded on my target board. So now I can use the kit proc as well as I can use the mini proc to program this device. At the same time I can use the kit proc as well for example oops sorry for example to program that micromedia board that I have as well. The reason why we have to snap off the kit proc from the target is actually these two lines. They are not on the connector here but they are on the very same connection. They are two extra traces which are laid there and this is a serial connection between the kit prop processor and the target processor. The problem is that those lines are not adjusted in voltage based on the target voltage. So if you are running your target with 3.3 volt and you are you want to use kit proc which is powered with 5 volts basically these two lines will fry the IO they are connected to on your target. To prevent that we simply snap them off. To verify that our modification is working this is a screen where I'm using the original configuration with D1 installed and you can see easily that our single wire data line is actually pulsed with 5 volt signal. So here we go, I press the button and programming is ongoing. You can see that we have now a programming voltage of 3.6, 3.7 volts roughly which corresponds to the supply voltage that I have on my target board. One last thing I want to show you on the target board is the target board also has a USB connector. So you can actually do a USB connection with your PC from the 
from the target board, for example, for data transfer. But be careful, if your board is supposed to be running from a separate supply on 3.3 volts, you have to remove D2, which is this one here. This is important because otherwise you will have a shortcut between the 5 volts that are coming via the USB connector and, for example, 3.3 volts, which you are supplying external to the board. If you want to run the target board on 3.3 volts and if you want to use in parallel the USB connector, for example, to transfer somewhat data to a PC or something like that, then you have to remove D2 on this board. Let me try to get close enough to show you where D2 is, if I can get it focused somehow. Here we are. D2 needs to be removed. D2 is actually doing the same function for the target board as D1 is doing for the kit proc board. So this needs to be removed with that, the power supply from the USB port to the target board is segregated and you can do external supply to the target board. So I hope you liked it. It's my first video. I know it's a bit bumpy. I hope I will learn to do better, easier, more understandable. If you have any additional questions, let me know and hope to see you soon again.